Hey guys, Barry here. Um, today we're going to dissect another question and like um, my previous videos, I'll be pointing out the knowledge that's required as well as the skills uh, that have been laid out by ASA um, in their information booklet. Okay, so what particular skills will be necessary. Now, in addition to those things, I thought I would also emphasize the different stages that we go through when we are solving a game set style question. And uh, the reason why it's important, I believe, is you'll be able to figure out where you might be going wrong if you're struggling with these types of questions. So we've already talked a bit about knowledge. So are there any gaps in knowledge that you might be um, that you might have um, that's stopping you from getting to the answer could be specific skills such as math skills, you know, numeracy skills as an example, or is it a more broader problem, um, which we're going to talk about in terms of the stages that you go through. Okay, like how essentially how you're approaching the problem and the thinking steps that um, are associated with that. Okay, so these steps that I uh, talk about, I like to break it down to four major steps. So number one is to define the problem. Okay, that's typically what we go through first. And often we're trying to figure out what the question is asking. Okay, essentially. Now in the next step, we normally plan. Okay, so we think to ourselves, what can we do now? And how do we go about it? How are we going to solve this problem essentially? Uh, so you'll look around, the question itself, you might think about the things that you know and uh, and try to decide if it's relevant to the problem, that sort of thing. And then in the third step to execute, uh, which is essentially, you know, once we already know what the question is asking and we have an idea of what to do, we, we do it. Okay. And in this particular step, we often employ uh, certain skills. Okay. So you might be um, employing numeracy skills, uh, numeracy skills such as rearranging equations, substituting in, um, estimating, that sort of thing. So that's where you essentially do stuff and try to solve the problem, try to figure out which of the answers is the most appropriate. Now in the final step, uh, which is reflection or to reflect, I always tell my students just to make sure that you've answered the question. That's essentially, you know, the, or the, the main function of that final step. Uh, which is just to quickly check, have I answered the question which I have defined in the first step? And the reason for that is often when we go through a problem, we can deviate from our original path or original intention uh, because it's, you know, doing these questions can be overwhelming and we can get distracted and end up solving a slightly different problem. Um, a great example of this is when you've got a question which is asking you which of the following options is not true or not consistent. So it's very easy to go through the options and then towards the end of uh, the, the process of trying to solve it, you forget that you were trying to solve that type of question. You end up choosing an option and say, oh, this option's true. That must be the answer. And forgetting that we were actually trying to look for the answer that is wrong, essentially. Okay, so that's a an obvious example of where just having, you know, getting to the habit of reflecting, just thinking about uh, what you have just got, what answer you have, does that make sense? Is it actually answering my problem? That's that fourth stage. So now we're going to go through this problem and I'm going to be um, emphasizing uh, which phases or stages that we are going through. Okay, so we're entering the first stage, which is to define the problem. And what I like to do is I go through uh, the question stem first or go to the question stem first. Which of the following planets is least likely to have an atmosphere? Okay, and we can see that the planets that they're referring to, Mars, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto. So there are four particular planets and we're looking for the one that is going to be the least likely to have an atmosphere. Okay, so I think that generally generally makes sense. I think most people would understand what the question is asking. Okay, so out of these options, 
um, which one most likely doesn't have an atmosphere. That's what it's trying to say. Okay, the least likely to the least likely to have an atmosphere. So now we're going to the next phase. Really, we're trying to figure out. Okay, well that's all well and good. How are we going to solve this? A very typical thing that we would do. Okay, so remember we're in the planning phase now. The step two. Uh, we might now go to the stimulus and look for keywords. Okay, that's going to help us to figure out what information is important. And uh, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to also refer to the ASA booklet and uh, to some specific skills as well. So we're going to the stimulus and you might realize this looks like a physics -y type of question. And I would say that most people probably haven't learned this topic about escape velocity. Now I can see from the very beginning it's talking about escape velocity. So being able to identify knowledge in new contexts, that is one of the skills. Um, and what we're going to do now as well is to see what information is relevant. So to be able to categorize and select information that's relevant to the problem. So in this case, what are we looking for? We're looking for information to do with planets. So if you do a quick word search for planet, you can see it appears in the table. That's where it would, um, you know, that's where I see it first. Um, and if I look, I can see that it's referring to planets over here as well. And I don't believe it is mentioned anywhere else. So at least you can see, yes, the stimulus is referring to planets. You can also see that Mars, Jupiter, uh, Neptune and Pluto are in the table, which is great, okay? So um, let's investigate further, all right? So let's see, what is the relevance of this? How is this going to help us? First of all, you can see that Mars, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto, they have these specific values. What are these values? That's what the next logical question should be. This is table one, and you can see that there's reference to table one over here. And what is it? Whoops, that's no, very messy at the moment, so let's have a read. The escape velocities of various planets are given in table one. Okay. So now I know that table one is referring to escape velocities. That's what those values are. So most people at this point will be thinking to themselves, what's an escape velocity? So that's something you should now use to, um, I guess, direct you where to go again. All right, escape velocities, where does it talk about that? Um, and the first point that it talks about is at the very beginning, where it talks about escape speed. So let's figure out what these values actually mean. The escape speed or velocity, so it's important to know that they're, they're similar. Okay, so there's a bit of assumed knowledge there. The escape speed from a celestial body is the speed that must be attained by a particle on the surface of the celestial body in order to escape the gravitational pull of that body. So that is a really big mouthful, but what you can do in situations like this is you can actually replace certain words to make it a bit easier to digest. So for example, celestial body, it's important to know that celestial is referring to things like the stars and, and planets. So this is probably talking about, or or you could probably just replace this with planet, right? So the escape speed from a planet, all right, so you can replace that with planet, is the speed that must be attained, okay? Now, now it must be attained, essentially it's saying that it must have. Okay, so the escape speed from a planet is the speed that it, it must have, okay, in terms of a particle that it must have to be able to escape the gravitational pull of the planet. Okay, so I'm kind of rewording it, right? So have and escape gravitational pull. Okay, now what does what does that mean? If, you, if we took a value, let's take Mars as an example. We can also see it's got units of uh, meters per second, okay, those values. So this is saying that Mars has an escape speed of five. No, sorry, I'm making this a bit hard to see. Five times 10 to the three meters per second. Okay, that's essentially 5,000 meters per second. What does that mean? If you are on Mars 
and you were a particle, you would need to travel uh, um, up to a speed of 5,000 meters per second to be able to escape the planet's gravitational pull. Okay, so that's what it means. Now, up until this point, you don't really need any specific uh, knowledge. Okay, so we've talked a bit about knowing that velocity is something to do with speed. Okay, so that is some specific knowledge. Okay, but you, you really don't need anything else at this stage. Okay. All right, so Mars has, has a escape velocity of about 5,000 or 5 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. That's all well and good. So we have some idea of escape speed. How does that relate to our question? What are we trying to figure out again? We're trying to figure out which of those planets is least likely to have an atmosphere. Now, if you look for the word atmosphere, okay, so we do a similar thing, you'll notice that there is no mention about atmosphere. However, okay, if you have a quick scan, you can see that it's referring to things like gases, okay, gaseous speeds, and you can see that, um, uh, where is it? Oh yeah, I think that's the only time it talks about it. Yeah, so it talks about um, distribution of gaseous speeds and gases. So the assumed knowledge is that atmosphere has got something to do with gases, essentially. All right. Um, there is a figure that's talking about gases, but we don't need to use it necessarily. But I think the fact that the word gases is there or gases is there should help you to figure out, uh, figure out that that might be an important thing. So an atmosphere is made up of gases or gas particles. So that's the link that they want you to make. Okay, so atmosphere is made up of gas particles. And now we have this logic that's been provided up there. It says that if a particle, a gas particle, let's say, is to escape a planet, it has to have a certain speed. It has to be traveling at a certain speed to be able to do that. Okay. Now, uh, oh, this is actually a good point. Um, we need to be able to follow that line of logic, don't we? So that's actually another skill to be able to evaluate and follow a line of reasoning. Okay, that's in your um, ACER booklet, um, information booklet as well. All right, so now we know that the question is essentially asking which of the following planets is least likely to keep its gas molecules. Okay, sorry about the horrendous horrendous writing, but you get the idea, okay? So which of the following planets is least likely to keep its gas molecules? That's another way you can rephrase this. Okay. So if we looked at all of these values, you'll notice that Jupiter's got the highest, it's got 60, and Pluto's got the lowest. What does that mean? Okay, so this is where we make comparisons. This is another skill, okay, to make comparisons. So it probably makes sense because we're looking for the question, or we're looking for the answer that is the least. We, we can straight away look at Jupiter and Pluto as good candidates to compare because they have the greatest and the smallest um, escape velocity or value. Okay, so one of those is probably going to be the answer. Now Jupiter, if it's 60, just imagine a gas molecule. If you're on Jupiter, you need to travel up to 60 times 10 to the 3 meters per second to be able to escape. Whereas if you're on Pluto, you only need to have a speed of 1.1 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. So on Pluto, it's a lot easier for the same particle to be able to escape. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So Pluto has a, a lower escape velocity. It's got a lower threshold, and that means it will be easier to escape from that planet. So going back to the question, that means it's probably the one that is least likely to have an atmosphere, okay? And it's the, it's the most likely, right? So here it says least likely to keep its gas. It's also the most likely, if I was to rephrase it, most likely for gas to escape, okay? So you can rephrase it that way as well. So which of those is most likely to have their their gas molecules or gas particles escape, it's Pluto because of 
the, the speed. Okay, now um, I should mention that we have essentially just done the execution. Okay, now it just happened in a flash. Okay, which was when we started to look at Jupiter and, and Pluto. Okay, that was the execution uh, phase. And what is quite typical and what people don't realize is actually the out of all of the steps, the execution, you know, to the execution, the, the execute stage, which is the stage of doing is often quickest. We spend a lot of our time actually trying to figure out what the question is asking and how to actually solve it, interestingly. Okay, and then I guess the next thing or the final thing is um, reflection. Okay, have we answered the question? So it's always good to just double check that we've answered the question. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more of these types of videos, please click subscribe. I've also got online courses for sale on my Teachable site, as well as holding classes throughout the year. If you want to find out if there's a class running, um, then the best thing is to probably check out my Facebook page for any updates because I'm the most active there. All right, thanks very much, guys. See you next time.